Hello and welcome back to Oversky Deck Pilot. This week I'm taking Remora's Curious Sky Yak list for a spin on the ladder. And this deck is crazy fun. I hope I'll be able to pull off some of the combos. I wouldn't say it's a tier 1 deck, guys. This is not going to consistently climb the ladder for you like Yellow Tempo or Green Red Crackthorn. But it is a very strong deck uh, if it does go off. And it's a very fun deck as well. So if you want something a bit... Uh, Bit, something for a bit of fun, just to have a laugh while you're playing Feria. Making a board full of Sky Axe will do that for you, I think. So let's get into some matches and see how the deck performs. Alright guys, into our first match. Up, up against P Dot, And we're going to throw these two. We're going to keep the Triton Warrior, which I talked about in the Mulligan section of Deck Doctor. And oh nice, so we've picked up a Sky Axe as well. So... We have some good options. We have Triton Warrior on turn 2, then we have Octopus on turn 3, and then we have Skyak on turn 4. Hopefully a mountain doesn't come down. Well, actually, I wouldn't mind a mountain coming down. I'd like to show you the uh, the red matchup. But it's just going to be a lake and pass. So let's drop a lake of our own, and we're going to pass as well. So building into the Triton Warrior for the next turn, we can go explore into lake into Triton Warrior, and then we can challenge anything that's played on this land, apart from that, because that's too big. <laughs> so we're gonna actually shift, we're gonna sh switch sides now, I think, because we don't have a, we don't have a really efficient way of dealing with this, apart from the octopus. So yeah, let's shift sides for now. This is only temporary. We are going to uh, develop to the left on the next turn. Uh, probably go for a forest here. And then we'll play the octopus as a 5-5. Five five. And then we can use the octopus to, you know, apply pressure to this tow ship. And tow ship, fantastic card. Very powerful at 5-5. Five five. Interesting. That's a sky axe. So this might be a mirror. Yeah, this looks like it could very well be a mirror. So let's take the forest like we talked about earlier. And then we'll turn this into a 5-5. Five five. And this will allow us to clear the tow ship if it moves into double collection. Uh, but we have to take into account if this is the Curious Sky Yak list as well. If this is a mirror match, uh, Emperor's Command could foil this plan. We'll have to see. Might not move at all. And then if we pick up Sunken Tower, in a really good spot. Now he's going for it. Taking that aggro land, gonna block with Triton Warrior? Or maybe an octopus of his own. It is gonna be an octopus, okay. So this is probably gonna be a 3 7. Very nice. Another Triton Warrior. So now what we could do is we can move, we can drop a lake here, go for the collection. Then we can play another octopus, but as a taunter this time. Yeah, we can leave it here. Oh, actually we could probably just go for the Triton Warrior, but I wouldn't mind sky yakking into Aurora's creation. So that costs like eight Feria. So keep that in mind when you want to make a copy of your sky egg. it's going to generally cost eight fair especially if you play a sky egg onto the field i'm going to jump this back because i'm only collecting from this well anyway and then if i need to influence the left hand of the board with the triton warrior i can do it and we don't actually want to kill this really if we kill this we start the the yak snowball early for our opponent We can take the clear with these two. We can actually take the clear with these two now. If this doesn't move back up, or we pick up a sunken tower, we can develop, say, a, a, a desert here. I can jump up, hit, hit, and move this up. But it looks like the uh, the, the, the tow ship is going to retreat safely out of reach of my 5-5. Five five. Lake into a curious biomancer. So again, all those yanks very, very early. It's no surprise we're getting a mirror match. Deck Doctor did come out. So 
So Curious Biomancer drawn the last two yaks in PDOT's deck. Very, very powerful. Now I do believe we start building forests again. Could use the frog tosser somewhere. So we're probably going to frog toss the next turn. We just need to decide where exactly we're going to do that. Our opponent has more sky yaks than us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to build a forest down here and collect from this well. And I'm just going to do this. And I might play another Triton Warrior. No, we'll, we'll leave it at that. So we don't want to kill our opponent's Skyak. Uh, we want to draw our Skyaks first. So then we can at least contest the Skyak. Oh, that's very interesting. So what this does, this allows us to kill two Skyaks and he loses a value. Because what you want to do is you want to play the Skyak after your Skyak has died. So you gain value, you gain the two Skyaks, and then let them die and play another Skyak and so on and so forth. Oh, we play playing Astanu, okay. So this could this actually could help us if we were to kill the Astanu. So this is not exactly the same build, it's got a bit of a tweak involved in the Astanu. So we do have Frog Tosser available, we do have the Tow Ship as well. So you have some good stuff coming out. Could even copy this. We really wanted to make things interesting. <laughs> um, kill, 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 Frog Tosser. Well, I can Frog Tosser this actually. Keep my 5 to alive. Then desert maybe, get the tow ship in here, play a yak on this spot. Do I five five three? Ah, I'd want a creation the yak, so I probably wouldn't bother with the tow ship if I'm going for the yak play right now. All right, I, I think we just do the tow ship line. So let's yeah, clear this, clear this, play the frog tosser in the middle. And we tow ship up here into double collection. So now we are try collecting. I do, um, actually I do open this up for a collection. Maybe I should have kept it here to make sure only two fairy was collected this turn. I could have actually played the 4-3 here to clear this. So a few little missteps by me actually. If we can kill, well, if we can clear the board and then get rid of this to make sure it's last whiz that don't trigger, we'll be in a really good spot. Emperor's Command. Into two Sky Axe. So if there's no Aurora's creation, oh no, it's more than two. One, two, it's gonna be three. So as long as we kill, all these yaks and there's no cre oh no there's a creation scratch that <laughs> so our opponent was able to plot a sky yak combo before us and this is actually really relevant now because i don't think we can win this based on if we kill these sky yaks that's helpful Yeah, it's not looking good, guys. It's not looking good. We'll frogify this. Uh, we will have to play very defensively. Ah, I can't play anything safe. It's a problem. This can get in reach of my warrior. Yeah, I gotta say this game's over. I, I can't stop uh, a yak onslaught. Uh, but this looks like a very similar build to what I posted in Deck Doctor. Uh, the Astano be being the only card that looks different. But in the mirror match, I think it's important to note that the player who gets the Yaks first is probably going to win. 
and the Curious Biomancer did secure that. So let's call, let's write this one off, guys, and go into the next match. All right, we're going up against He Who Smites. This hand is awful. Let's get rid of it. His hand is not much better, and this was one of the weaknesses I was talking about in Strengths of Weaknesses. Clunky hands. This is this is what I would call a clunky hand. I have the option of Aurora into nothing into creation on Aurora. So I do have some options uh, come turn three. But this is this is not good. I guess I can have Crystal Flower the first threat. If a land comes forward, it's going to be path to face. Right, so uh, I'm going to now defend. And build a diamond to protect myself against the path to face. So as long as there's no earthcraft, I should be in a pretty good spot. There is an explore. So Crystal Flower is kind of useless in this matchup. It depends what it depends what the build is, actually. It could just be kind of a more old school green yellow haste. I'll have to see. And it's gonna be a flash salmon going in. Hitting into prayer. Draws a card. Oh, into the earthcraft. That's awful. Man, the earthcraft just messed me up there. He drew the earthcraft from the prayer. So we're going to have to actually change our game plan a little bit now. We have some healing. I don't know. It's, it's not looking good, guys. So let's... <laughs> I want to creation this yak before I play it. So I think we take a lake. And I think we just pass. Now I could play Crystal Flower, I suppose, as a block, but I don't think it's gonna work out for us. So I could easily take 12 damage to the face this turn. We'll, we'll have to see. And I don't really have a good follow-up. I have Flower, I could Flower a Cohen Chieftain. I could heal with Emperor's Command or kill uh, a monk. And then next turn I have Yak into creation and then I can pass. Or maybe play Aurora on the Yak. To make sure I get a collector. Here we go. Flash Salmon, start things off. He's moving, so that means there's another creature. Oh, no Rakoan Chieftain. That's that's pretty nice for us. Uh, Rakoan Chieftain would have made things a little bit more awkward. Could we really take more damage? There's something we don't want. Something we're going to take his land. I'm take a mountain there. And a pass. Oh, man, we don't want... This is so cl This is such a clunky hand. It's very, very sad. Um, yeah, we'll take the yak. We can take it here, I guess. Take the creation. And then we can maybe just play Aurora on the yak here. So we're blocking like one space uh, where our opponent can attack. Now I could have sky yaked here to block this desert. Uh, but I'd rather do that once this dies. So once this gets killed, and I, I have made it more difficult for myself, unfortunately, using the Aurora's creation, but I wanted to get a blocker in uh, just to make life a bit more awkward for our opponent. Takes a draw, okay. It looks like all the lands have been built. If this lives and I don't have to really do anything, I will consider. Oh, okay. That's actually good for me. In a weird way. Because now I can Empress Command this and I have a 6 6. Takes a desert here, I'd imagine. Oh, a desert here. Oh, I'm creating another avenue of attack for Wind Soldier and Flash Salmon.
into Rakoan Chieftain. Into Follower. Push some damage. And we have it. So, oh, another Skyak. So I like, what I like doing here is taking the Crystal Flower. We're gonna make it in land. You know what, let's Crystal Flower this Rakoan in a very awkward spot. Let's, let's, let's stick him over here. We'll take the clear on this. Now we will summon a Skyak, and then we will use the Emperor's Command to deal free damage to this. So next turn we have a 6-6 at his orb that can start pushing damage, and then I can summon Skyax next to it. So we probably won't be using the uh, the Skyax multiple ability in this matchup. We're probably just going to use them to apply pressure or just try and sustain. Now that, that Empress Command could have been very valuable for healing or perhaps even removing a threat, but I kind of feel like if I'm going to win this game, I don't have a lot of time. So I can eliminate the Crystal Flower up top, uh, push 6 damage next turn, play another Yak. If Aurora survives, I can then potentially play another Creation on her and push another 6 damage. So I have options that I'd like to use aggressively and it's going to be a pass very interesting so this actually gives me the ferrier to uh oh i can actually creation this now not sure if i want to we also have um we also have frog tosser which is quite nice yeah let's take let's do this We'll play another Skyak. So we're just trying to kill him the next two turns. Okay, giving that 6-6 six, six a bit of help. It's gonna need two more damage to find lethal um, over the next two turns. So being able to play that Skyak there is uh, pretty helpful. Takes another draw. So now he who smites even needs to push a tremendous amount of damage in this turn and potentially kill me or decide if he needs to play reactively and respond to the sky axe near his orb. I doubt there's going to be much of a reactive response. I think it's going to be more of an aggressive response. So a follower comes down it doesn't do much. Path to Paradise wants to get into that slot there. Interesting. So we can clear the the follower with Aurora. I assume we're just going to see a powered up monk. Maybe into prayer. This is an awkward matchup to navigate around because it's just so... It just snowballs so hard. Creating another avenue for Wind Soldier in the future. Ah, four attacks kind of sad. So we'll probably use Aurora on the on this guy, and then we'll use the Frog Tosser. So yeah, we can move here, move here. We can then Frog Tosser this. Hopefully get the frog here. That times. Oh, I guess I should have played it here actually and try and get the frog here. That was a bit of a misstep from me. Set up lethal. Hope for the best, I guess. Get plus one in case we need a frog toss the next turn, but I think this is going to be the last turn. For one of us, at least. Full fairy is not a lot to work with, though. I, I don't know how you'd kill me. Oh, we've only one avenue of attack. Wind soldier. Push free damage. Into the prayer. Flash wind, wind soldier. Flash wind, wind soldier, into what? He'd need like wind soldier into soul drain on the old wind soldier to follow her to finish me off. Or maybe he has wind soldier soul pack runin's guidance. 
That's another way you could win. I think that's going to be it. And there we have it. So we did get the win in the end. Uh, I think it ultimately came down to the fact that we had our 6-6 uh, crystal flowered right in front of his orb. And I had the Empress command in hand. And just cracking that crystal flower open and making sure we can find a lethal. So that was a tense game, but at least we got the win. All right, guys. Let's see if we get a better hand. We do get a better hand this time. All right. We can work with this. I mean, we throw these two, we keep the tow ship, and we get a warrior with an Aurora's creation. So we have some good cards to uh, leverage in the early game. And Raizu, which is probably a smurf account for Raizu. Now we can go into the tow ship and take control of this well. Gonna be explore into a lake, into an archon. Okay, I like that. And gonna sunken tower is back. <laughs> Very interesting. So I'm just gonna take another lake here then, and then collect, and then I'm gonna play the warrior to challenge this archon. If it comes down to double collect, now it's very really hard to move this warrior into a position where it can't challenge the archon. Although he can double neutral, collect, move, and clear. That's an option. Uh, but he'd need like a campfire or an Empress Command if he wants to make it this Archon live. But these two trade, I don't think I'm that bothered to be honest. Because I still have this as a double collector. So as long as he's trade, I'm fine. Just being very disruptive with the sunken tower. One of its uh, one of its qualities, actually, being able to disrupt your opponent's land game plan, could be quite valuable. Gonna pass. Interesting. So I think I'm happy to just take the trade off here. Then we can summon a Skyag. I don't mind doing this so much because our opponent is going to have 10 Fairy. Probably going to play a few cards onto the board. We can follow up the Curious Biomancer. And then we can start developing the uh, Skyag army. He's actually going to clear this now. Again, like I said, I don't think I'm that bothered to be honest because of the Curious Biomancer. And then going to develop a Wave Crash Colossus. Oh, wait, well, we have... Most of Ajax now, which is quite nice. So we can actually go for the Biomancer. And then we can go Yak into Yak. And I think we'll take some Feria. Oh no, we need we need a lake for the uh we need a lake for the creation, so that's fine. We can take plus one next turn, we can collect here, take plus one, and we'll be in a happy spot. Gonna move into another Colossus. Alright. So these two can kill this. Take the plus one into the creation. Kill this. And then we go. And there we have it. We just, I like this little feat you can do with the Sky Axe. We've just surround whatever you want to kill. I, I think I featured a clip in my Deck Doctor where there was a Sky Whale and I just completely surrounded it. Into a Mystic Beast. All right, so we can we can take care of business here. No problemo. Aurora, that is such a good draw. All right, we'll take a draw because we want to find another creation. That's kind of our thing now. We can play Aurora up here. Kill this. Kill, kill this. And that's going to be a concede. So Skyax can really snowball if they get out of hand. And if you kind of get this early, you're in a really good position because if your opponent's not playing red, 
uh, you can basically just flood the board and they can't do anything about it. So blue jump here, for example, can't really do much against this Skyak nonsense because they don't have any area of effect removal or any real removal outside of the Ninja Toad. So that's just a good example of how you can oppress your opponent with Skyax. All right, guys. Next match, we're going to keep this and we're going to throw these two. So this gives us an early collector. And we picked the Triton Warrior, so very, very nice there. Take a link to start off with. Got greetings, and then we'll pass. So we'll actually prioritize the Triton Warrior to start off with. I'm curious to see what our opponent's playing. Hoping it's not red. Red just uh, just murders me. Take a lake. And then we will pass. And it is a brute as well. Oh, oh man. This is just this is just sad, so. Again, I'm kind of hoping that he doesn't have a Horse Master, since most red players do when they want it. It's just me as well. Horse Master is such an important part of red's deck. We're just going to see it move. Dang one and play another brute. So this is a lot of damage represented. Oh, I have a frog fly. That's quite nice. But unfortunately, it doesn't do too much right now. Simply because... Well, I don't know. I guess I could limit the pain. It's just killing this one. And do I want to... I can't really answer this. Like, six attack is really... Six life is really difficult to deal with. So let's, let's biomance. So let's get our yaks while we can. We'll take the Frogify, we'll take the Clear. So we're kind of hoping that the Yaks can carry us now in the early game. Ground Shaker. I guess we just go for our first yak. Get this guy down, and then we can pass. Then we summon the two yaks, then we summon the four yaks, and we go from there. And hopefully that'll give us what we need to stay in the match. So you can take value here. Keep the brute alive, move up. Might just trade off. Might just gift of steel. Gift of steel is... Oh, okay. Grappling hook. So take no damage and then shimmy into this spot here. So I'd really like Aurora at this point. But we do have access to Frog Tosser. So that's going to be very helpful. Oh, the frog. Not lining up in a perfect position. I guess I, I, I could have played it here, but then again, if he doesn't have removal for some reason, I can use these two to clear the ground shaker. But yeah. Red is, red is a tough one. 
for sure. It's, it's, it's a tough matchup. Into another Grand Shaker? Yeah, okay. So maybe trying to line up a Horse Master for the future. Let's take, let's, let's play a little more aggressively. Let's play this here to block our face. And then we can play this here. We can pass, so that we can see if a Firestorm comes down. If a Firestorm comes down, uh, we can go for a more flood based strategy. I'm going to try and get an aggressive forest um, at the top right hand corner there so we can start applying pressure with Yak. So maybe use Aurora in a way to uh, clear either clear a path on the left hand side or apply more pressure and push damage. So let's let's see. Cypher's Ram? Oh, just a Flame Burst. Okay. Mountain into. Devouring Plant? Okay, that's a card I wasn't expecting. Definitely a card I wasn't expecting. So I think it's time to... Maybe we take a lake here for now. Just clear this and we just pass so we have Aurora uh, kind of safely away if if Aurora isn't respected I could use Aurora's creation on Aurora uh, to make sure that we can uh, continue to fend off these ground shakers but I would like to draw an Emperor's command soon just to get some healing just to make sure I can uh, keep my health topped up and no surprise <laughs> horse masters into flame bursts and stuff can uh, can finish me off Decides to shimmy down. Takes a land. What's going to be played there? Or is it just going to be a pass? Could it be a Grim Guard? And another Devouring Plant! Why are you doing this to me, Kevin? <laughs> Stop! <laughs> oh, man. What have I become? Mr. Aurora. I kind of feel like I need to block this. Because if I don't, I'm going to be in a bit of trouble. Now this is my last Skyak. I already used the creation, so I don't mind just getting this down now. Um, I have a 6-6 six, six Sky Axe, so if I do pick up another creation, the, the chances of the 6-6 six, six one surviving is quite high. So this could allow me to, you know, go for the, the big, the, the big Yak play a little later on when I pick up that creation. But I really need to protect my life right now until I pick up that Emperor's Command. And I can use these Yaks to clear out the Grand Shakers. Depends if this 5-6 decides to move, but I have Sunken Tower. Can that make a difference? I don't think so. We're a bit landlocked at the moment. We are tri triple collecting now, and our opponent's only double collecting, so we're going to be taking over the economy race. It just really depends on what Kevin decides to do this turn and how it influences the board. Um, removal is probably the best thing. <laughs> there is going to be no Firestorm, at least, which is nice. So we'll see. We also have the option of uh, Oversky Tow Ship next turn, and then dash onto that central mountain. So if another Grimgard wanted to come down to protect the orb, we'd have to use... Oh no, is he going face? Oh, this is so sad. So I am desperate for healing. Could just have Flame Burst Ciphers to finish me off. So let's use these Yaks. Oh, it makes no difference. We got double Aurora there. Let's sit on this. Let's 
move this Skyak up. So this is going to be an aggressive Skyak. And I think we have to go for the aggressive line here. We just have to go for the tow ship. And then next turn, the plan is to play a land. Oh, no, I can't do it. No, Sunken Tower this here. Oh, no, 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 I couldn't do it. I messed that up. I need to play the land here so I can Sunken Tower this up and then push more damage. But I've kind of landlocked myself now. Unless I make a land here and push myself up. So, yeah, actually, I can just make a land under the Skyak. Let's see if he has lethal. Oh, I really need that Empress Command. I could just be dead. This is this is the problem with playing against Red. You know, they can just kill you from hand so easily. Cypher's Wrath. Cypher's Wrath. I'm on one. I'm on one life. Please. I can't. I need to make land if I want to push the damage and set up lethal. Okay, we're going for it, guys. This is this is how this is how we do it. Block the horse master, and now we pray there is no damage in hand against red. A little ambitious, but I'd rather go for the lethal than try and draw it into an Empress Command there. And just another Grand Shaker to finish this off. And that's it. That's gives you an idea of what Sky Axe is capable of. But there's a lot of red on ladder. It's going to be very tough playing this list. Just because of how much damage red does so fast. So yeah, that is going to be it for Sky Axe. Hope you guys have more success than I did. That wraps up this episode of Deck Pilot. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Unfortunately, there's so much red on ladder right now, it was very hard for me to get a game where my opponent didn't just run a train over me with uh, with just mono red. Like, mono red really hurts this deck so much, and uh, it's very difficult to defeat them. So if the ladder is full of red decks, I wouldn't recommend Curious Skyak, but if your ladder is quite, I know, quite even, quite balanced, uh, this this deck list is really fun and I definitely recommend it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, drop a subscribe to keep up to date of when our content goes live. We also have the hub, the uh, source of knowledge for all that is Feria. And you go to theory.com slash the hyphen hub for the latest guides, decks and articles from the community and myself. So until next time, guys, take care and enjoy Curious Skyak.